Hi, Dr. Brad with Weedman Lawn Care. Today I wanted to talk to you about lawn irrigation. Traditionally, in the months of June, July, and August, we're not receiving enough rainfall to keep our lawns green. That can happen any time of the year, so when it does happen, we want to make sure we're irrigating our lawn. Our lawn's a living organism, and if we want to keep it green, lush, and healthy, it's going to require some additional water. There are really two types of irrigation methods when we think about lawn irrigation. The first is below ground irrigation. This one's really expensive to have in your lawn, but it's really nice because you can set specific times to irrigate during the day and the length of time that you want to irrigate. The other is far more affordable, which is above ground sprinklers. As I mentioned, the cost difference is quite substantial. This one takes a little bit more manual effort though because we need to be moving our sprinklers around the yard. As you can see, right behind me we have irrigation, and you can see the really distinct difference of this green lawn that has the underground irrigation compared to the ones behind me where they haven't received enough water, but they have been doing above ground irrigation. If you do have an underground irrigation system, it's really important to make sure we're running an irrigation audit where we're checking the coverage of our heads, checking to make sure each irrigation head is working properly right away in the spring when we turn it on. I also suggest doing additional irrigation audits, two or three of them, throughout the year to make sure the operation of our system is still appropriate. One of the biggest questions we always get, how am I supposed to know how much to irrigate? That really depends on what the weather is like. If it's really hot, really sunny, windy, we're gonna be irrigating more, maybe as much as a third of an inch per day. If it's really cloudy and cool, it's gonna be far less down towards a tenth of an inch per day. The second question we always get is, how am I supposed to be able to know how much water is coming out of my sprinklers onto my lawn? Really, the best way to do that is to buy an inexpensive rain gauge. Or, if you don't want to buy a rain gauge, you could use something as simple as a cereal bowl from your kitchen. Either way, turn your irrigation on for 30 minutes or one hour and measure how much water is in that bowl, and that will help you understand how long you need to have your irrigation on to get an inch of water out on your property. The other thing we want to think about when we irrigate is to make sure we're doing it as infrequently as possible. Watering one or two times a week promotes deeper roots in our lawn. When we water every single day, it promotes shallower roots. Deeper roots are going to create a healthier turf grass plant as we get through the really tough times of summer when our lawns are stressed. Once you've determined how much you need to irrigate, you want to start thinking about what time of day you want to irrigate. Really the best time is really early morning, before the sun even comes up. What we're trying to do here is not water during the heat of the day, so we get to use all of the water that we're putting down, and also minimizing leaf wetness. For those of us that water in the evening, we cause the grass to be wet in the evening all the way through the night, which can promote disease. However, some water is better than no water, so if we're looking at our lawn and it's turning brown, the only opportunity we have is to get water down in the evening, that will still work. But we, like I said, we do bring in the chances of additional disease on our lawns. Traditionally, when rainfall returns, our lawns will green up again. So even if you have brown areas in the lawn, don't worry, over time they should recover. Let's see. <laughs> yep, sure did. 